Wait, the short version. There was a short version. I saw you guys looked a little bored, so I just maybe we'll play that uh, third verse later. That's how we end the show. Thank you for coming out, everybody. We'll play that last verse for you. But uh, how was the food? Good. Ah. I heard there was pierogies. <laughs> oh man. You missed the pierogies. I missed the pierogies. They'd be sitting like a big ball of lead in my stomach right at this moment, I bet. We, we did a... Uh, in 2008, I believe it was, the CCMA Awards were in Winnipeg. And uh, that year we had Beautiful Life out. And fortunately enough, we got Fans' Choice that year. So we had a, a small town Manitoba Proud tour we did after. And, talking about pierogies, we went to every small town, I think three or four small towns in, in, in Manitoba, and uh, the community club, they got together, and all the ladies got together and cooked us dinner for like, a, I don't know, two hours before every show. My God, I think we all gained about 20 pounds. In, <laughs> in four days? <laughs> the amount of pierogies we had in Manitoba in, in one week was enough to last me for a while. But. So by the way, my name is Chris Thorsteinson. I'm Dave Waslu. That's a Ukrainian name. Yeah. I got clapped for being Ukrainian, that's not hard. <laughs> right Anybody ever used to listen to Nestor Pister? There we go. I used to have the record when I was a kid, the snow golf record. I think my parents let me listen to that. Like my kids watch TV and I'm like, oh, that's not appropriate. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like eight years old listening to Nestor, telling Nestor Pister drove to school. <laughs> I still have a couple maybe for later, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm from a town called Westburn, Manitoba. It's uh, 20 minutes north of Portage of Prairie. And, uh, do we have anybody from small towns here or grew up in a small town? You guys like that? <laughs> I love it. I love, still live there. I uh, actually live in my parents' house. I, I bought an old house in Westburn, moved a block of His parents have moved uh, since. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, he just lives in the basement. Yeah, I, I still live in the basement. Box, and, you know. Uh, with my three kids. <laughs> we all play Xbox. But, no, I actually, when I moved out of my house, I moved a block and a half away. Bought an old house and renovated it. And then uh, my dad ended up moving to Portage. So uh, I moved back a block and a half. It's funny, I've never moved with a four-wheeler and a trailer before. <laughs> I love it. I mean, uh, I'm glad my kids grew up there, and uh, the small town has really been a big part of my life. So on our 16 and 1 record, we actually recorded that at the old school in Westburn. They, uh, they shut it down in 2000, and my dad and I used to take care of it and fix the leaks in the roof and whatnot. Finally, the community club one day said, do you guys want to buy the school? And we're like, no. We need a school for it. So anyway, they said, well, would you please? So they basically gave it to us pretty cheap so we could take care of it. And I'm like, now what do we do with the school? So we would have garage sales there and stuff. And then one day I'm like, I should build a studio in the school. So we changed it to a Westburn Old School Studios and we recorded our 16 and one record there. And uh, it, was, it was kind of surreal. Our, our, uh, the vocal booth we had had a bunch of old 4-H clothes around it for, uh, or what would you call that? Dampening effect. For dampening effect. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it didn't smell very good. But, oh gosh. But I was singing this song and I looked and I was about three feet away from my desk in grade four and I used to go to school and, and uh, it was right across the road from my house so I got up at like 10 to 5, or 10, 10 to 9, <laughs> walk over to school with messy hair. And, it was, it was pretty awesome, so it was pretty cool recording uh, that 16 to 1 record in there and literally singing the, the lyrics to this uh, like five feet from my grade 4 desk. I never would have thought would have ended up back there doing this, but uh, here's a weren't song. You, weren't you nominated for, are they most likely to be like the janitor yes. at the West Spring School? <laughs> I was reading his yearbook. It was, I was reading. Guess who vacuums the school now? I know. <laughs> I was actually, there was some people coming out to have a look at it, and I'm like cleaning the school up, and I, I thought back, and I actually went to my, I think it was grade four yearbook, and you know, a buddy of mine most likely to be a doctor, and then this person most likely to be this, and me was most likely to be the janitor at the Westburn School. <laughs> so it kind of turned out true. Right? So here's a song that we recorded there, a little song about our hometown, Westburn.
just something about this small town Where generations of blood are carved in a storm Yeah, that's where I belong Smiling face at the filling station No bulletproof glass, this is family home yeah, that's where I belong Where there's a little white church Couple of rundown shacks Green elevator by the railroad tracks Where every day's like Living a country song That's where I belong Got me high at the wheel at 14 Now I can drive my hair down these back roads With my eyes closed In a 77 Silverado Cruising around the lakeside with my Yes. I remember that. That was insane. 
It was like a <laughs> we had, yeah. Ride. We we he actually sang it, and what he sang turned into the high harmony. His part, yeah, my part. So okay. that's why that last song. Sing a lead on that now, maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. <Nope>. Throw me a bone. But um, what? I, I forgot my set list. I guess we'll just run with it. Eh? Sure. Let's do. Uh, Brown eyed girl. Brown eyed girl. <laughs> 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 you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna. Uh, I love telling these little stories about the songs. Um, one of the first songs that we had out that really kind of changed our career was a song called Rocket Girl. Yeah. Was, was, um, and you know what's funny? That was never supposed to be a, a radio single. We were putting the the album together, and our manager Ron Kitchener also managed Jason McCoy. So we're in North Battleford at the casino, and. This is how long ago it was when we got a song sent to us. It wasn't by email. We didn't check our phones. They had to send a cassette in advance to the casino. And, uh, it came via donkey. Yeah. <laughs> Uphill, both ways. But so anyway, we get to the casino and this manager calls. Says you gotta have a listen to the song that Jason wrote. It's a pretty amazing song, and uh, I think you guys would do a good job of it. So I remember we found a cassette player somewhere in the casino and hooked it up to the PA and listened to it. And I remember falling in love with the song instantly and wondering why the heck Jason's not going to put it on his record. I'm like, what's wrong with it? Yeah. I'm like, it sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> so, excuse me, anyway, we find out it just didn't suit the record that he was making at the time. And uh, I'm like, yeah, sure, we'll record it. But we didn't really, it really wasn't like anything that was on radio at the time, so we thought it's gonna, you know, it's gonna have trouble getting to radio. So let's just record it the way we wanted to record it. And uh, I'm glad we did. You know, I'm glad we didn't know it was gonna do what it did because if you listen to the recording, it's really simple, it's bare bones, and it's a great little story song. And uh, and I'm glad we did it because it sure connected with a lot of people, especially in the prairies. So we're gonna play that one for you right now. Song called Rock.
I'd never tell her she's been busted. I know she's never been anywhere just like me. But it makes you feel like Cinderella. But I get to see the world for free. Baby, just get me out of here Find me around 